All right, so here I have one of my cure devices. As you can see, this one didn't work very well because during the curing process, a lot of bubbles showed up in the PD mask. But regardless, I'm going to use this device here in order to show you the uh, inlet and outlet punching processes and um, the simplest way to adhere your device to a microscope slide, which is using super glue. All right, so first. I've cut out my design, cut off the edges using my box cutter um, so that I have clean edges around my device. So all I did was take off the sides of it essentially. And now what I'm going to do is carefully peel it up making sure not to tear the device as it's pretty thin. And also making sure only to touch the side that is currently exposed to the air because we want this side um, in touch with the PCB to remain completely uh, free of impurities and uh, in order to ensure the best bonding to our microscope slide here. Alright, so now I'm going to peel my printed circuit board up, or my device up. Sometimes it's useful to use your box cutter or razor in order to help get this process started, but at a certain point you should be able to just peel it off pretty nicely. If you've made the layer too thin, sometimes it will uh, rip, which can be extremely frustrating because you have to start all the way over, so just be very gentle with it. You can see this uh, frostiness appearing from the parts that have been pulled up off of the, uh, the PCB. Uh, this is so frosty at the beginning, so frosty, because um, the first time a printed circuit board, one of these guys, is used for this process, it imparts this frosty... Uh, layer onto my P uh, onto the PDMS. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but if you are to reuse this PCB, this uh, won't happen as dramatically. So making sure only to touch the sides of the device and not touch the bottom of the device, the part that will be in contact with our microscope slide. All right, so now I'm going to attack it from the other end. All right, so here is my design. Here is the bottom side up so that you can see it. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the clear layer, which is corresponds to our copper layer here. Um, there we go. The clear layer is slightly indented in the PDMS, so this will be our channel through which our um, experiment will run. And so at this point, we need to punch inlet and outlet holes uh, on our design. So the way we're going to do that is using a, a lure. And um, the best way to do this is to use a lure that is one size smaller than the lure that you will use to inject your fluids into the, um, into the device. 
because if the hole is slightly smaller than the um, lure that will be used in the experiment, it will provide a very tight fit and it won't leak. So I'm going to punch this into the inlet here, making sure, once again, to only have the tip of the lure touch the bottom of the, de the device and um, definitely not my, my fingers whatsoever. There we have one hole. All right, now I'm gonna punch the outlet. You're gonna be as gentle as you can in this process as well, as the PDMS is pretty susceptible to tearing under this kind of stress. All right, so now I have inlets and outlets punched, and so I'm going to set this down for a minute and prepare my slide for adhesion using the uh, super glue. So the method I'm going to do this is I have this slide that I will use to actually adhere the device to, and then I have two more slides. One of these slides, I'm going to impart a line of super glue at the bottom all the way across and then using the other slide I'm going to take that line of super glue and uh, spread it a very thin layer across the surface of the entire slide. This very thin layer hopefully will be thin enough that we I can lay down my device bottom down onto the super glue and the super glue will only uh, attach to the parts of the device that are not indented. So this is only about a 40 mi uh, micrometer indentation, so this layer needs to be extremely thin. And the faster you do this, the better, because the super glue will dry rather quickly. So there you go. There's my line of super glue at the bottom there. And I'm going to spread it across using this other slide here. And then add a little bit more if your entire slide isn't covered. Because we want the entire um, we want the entire device to have super glue imparted onto it except for the part that is indented. So now I'm going to lay down my device face down onto the slide and then push down on the areas that are not indented that are not my channels push down rather gently and then very gently on the traps peel this guy off and now put him right here onto my fresh microscope slide and push down firmly. Push down firmly on the walls of your device. Now this is a, uh, at this point this process is not very efficient. It's desirable because it's extremely cheap. I will post another video in which I use a plasma wand which is highly efficient but the plasma wand costs about $200 but it's a, it's a really cool little uh, science experiment in which you um, run a uh, essentially electric current 
over the surface of your um, device and it will expose uh, it'll knock off hydroxyl groups of, off the surface of the polydime polydimethyl siloxane which then um, allows for bonding to another glass surface and so once you have run your plasma wand over the device and knocked off all these hydroxyl groups um, your PDMS device is essentially activated for bonding for about 20 or 30 seconds then you put on a microscope slide push down and it adheres perfectly but the super glue process costs absolutely nothing and so after you let it sit for about 30 seconds you can test how well it has adhered by just trying to pull up the sides This guy seems like he's done pretty well for himself. So now the real test is to try to flow a certain um, substance through this device without any sort of leaks and without the traps becoming detached from the uh, slide surface.